Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to Burnett Avenue. Good morning, Burnett Avenue. Guess what? It's our 134th year church anniversary. Are you excited about that? Come on, get some excitement in your spirit and stand on your feet as we lift up the name of Jesus on this great 134th year church anniversary. Those that are online, we want you to press like and share and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through our worship service. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our morning hymn. We've come this far by faith. Sister Sharon is going to come and lead us. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, lift your voice this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody came to rejoice this morning? It didn't have to be this way, but the Lord woke us up and brought us to church this morning to celebrate this 134th anniversary. He's God. He's God in my life. He's God in your life. Turn to somebody and say, I'm just glad to see you this morning. Come on, turn to somebody. Good to be in the fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to sing along with us if you know this song. This is a worship song to the Lord, just proclaiming, hallelujah, that he's God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up both my hands and I begin to worship. victorious. I'll praise them. Hallelujah. Come on, because of that, you ought to open your mouth. I'll praise them. Now here's the good part for all that he's done. For me.
worship him this morning. He's my all in all. Oh, come on, let's say it again. God is. He's my choice. scripture. Today we gather to worship God and give thanks to him for his goodness through all the years of worship and witness as a congregation. We are thankful to God, that God has called us to be his people, revealing his love to us through Christ Jesus and giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit and the joy salvation. We remember the members of this congregation who have freely given of their time and money, those whose wisdom has guided our congregation through times of celebration and crisis. We are thankful for their gifts and abilities and remember the words of Christ. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord for henceforth. Yea, say the, the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Give thanks for all who have preached and taught him, for all who have professed here that Jesus Christ is Lord, and for all who currently lead in worship, witness, and service. All together. Wherefore, seeing we are also a past about who so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and in the sin which does so easily People of God, let us get into the presence of God. Let us get into the holy of holies that we might praise and worship him. For he's truly worthy of all of our praise. So let us pray. Most all wise God, my heavenly father, the author and the finisher of my faith, the great I am, Alpha and Omega. 
Lord, we love you, and we can't get along without you. We need you every day, every minute, every second. Lord, we need you. Father, we, will, we ask you, if you will, sir, to have mercy on us and forgive us of all of our sins and transgressions. And Lord, please grant us a closer walk with thee. Be a lamp to our feet and a light into our path and lead and guide us from one good degree of grace to another. As we celebrate this anniversary, this milestone in our lives, worshiping and serving you in spirit and in truth, Lord, we ask that you will continue to do what you've already done. Be a lamp to our feet and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Father, let us remember this day as we set aside for our communion. We pray mightily, Father, if you would, sir, to let us be reminded of what happened that dark day on Calvary. Let us be reminded, Father, how you carried that rugged cross up a hill called Gargotha, burdened down with the weight of the cross, and they commanded that man, Simon of Surreal, to pick up that cross and carry it. Carried it all the way to the top of that hill. Oh, Lord Jesus, and they laid him down and put nails in his hand and nails in his feet. And as they were about to lift that cross up and put it into the socket of the ground, Jesus looked and told that Roman soldier, don't lift me up. Roman soldier said, I've done this before. This is nothing new to me. He said, don't lift me up. If you lift me up, I'll show you the universal magnetism of my power. I'll draw all men unto thee. Oh, Lord, he lifted him up. And while he was hanging on that rugged cross, one thief on the left and one on the right, and the one on the left said, if you be the Son of God, come down and save yourself and save us. But the thief on the right said, we are here because of our unjust deeds. He looked at Jesus and said, Father, remember me. Jesus stopped dying and said, this day, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. He hung there until the world rocked and reeled from center to circumference, hung there until the moon hemorrhaged in blood and the sun refused to shine. Somebody asked Mr. Sun, why won't you shine? Mr. Sun said, two suns can't shine at the same time. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you. And as he hung on that cross, he didn't say a word. But in his subconscious, he was remarking that thief on the left. He said, you just wait till Sunday morning. And I'll show you that it's better to get up out of a grave than come down off of a cross. Oh, Lord, they buried him in Joseph's new tomb. There he stayed for three days and three nights. And Joseph gave him that tomb. I often wonder why Jesus had to borrow a tomb because the earth and the Lord and the fullness are of them. They that dwell therein, everything belonged to him. The cattle on a thousand hill belonged to him. He didn't have to put a brand on them because they belonged to him. He didn't have to carve his name in the side of a mountain because it belonged to him. He didn't have to put a tag in the lilies of the valley because they belonged to him. He didn't have to get a copyright for the songs that the birds are saying because he, it belongs to him. Ha, you tell me what don't belong to God. Everything. And the Bible said every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. The wounded knee, the sick knee, the white knee, the black knee, the young knee, the old knee. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. But let us not forget what happened on Calvary. As he hung on that cross, he looked up into heaven and he saw his father. And his father looked down on that cross. He couldn't see his son. He saw your sins and my sins. He saw murder and death and all kind of ailments. He saw it all. But he couldn't see his son because he was covered with our sins. And Jesus looked up at his father and said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus went on and died. 
Couldn't nobody kill him. He just gave it up. He turned out his own lights. But I don't like to stay there too long. Well, early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. He got up with all power, both heaven and earth in his hand. Now he sits on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and I. What a marvelous, spectacular God we serve. He's everything that we need and everything that we think we might need. He's been there for us in the past. He's been there now in the present, and he'll be with us in the future. So we praise and worship you, Lord, this day. We love you, and we adore you. Can't get along without you. So bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you bless the angel of this church. I pray that you will cover Brother Shul with your love, cover him with your grace and your mercy that he might continue to preach one God, one faith, and one baptism. Let him be reminded, Father, everywhere he goes, he represents you. Bless him, Lord, with a word, and he might in turn give it to us, that we might apply it to our lives, that we might be a beacon light in this part of the vineyard to help guide weary souls to thee. And then, Father, one day when this world no longer afford us a home and we must swap time for eternity, travel to that land where no barren traveler returns, Cross the chilly streams of Jordan and stick our swords down in the sands of time and study war no more. Take off mortal and put on immortality and view that city that sits on 12 foundations that have 12 gates to it, three in the north, south, east, and west. Don't know what gate we'll be at, Lord, but we ask that you would meet us there and greet us there and say, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant, then faithful over a few things. Now come on up to bright glory where every day is Sunday and Sabbath has no end, over there where the streets are paved with gold, where the wicked are ceased from troubling and the weary to be at rest. We ask these favors in Jesus' name, our soon coming Savior. In his name we ask it all for Christ's sake. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that we ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Did you come this morning to give God the praise that he deserves? The song says, while I'm here, I'm going to give it all to him because he's been good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together.
on, won't you stand with us this morning and sing it with us? It's an easy song. Everything to me. Everything to me. He's everything to me. And then that old phrase, you can't make me doubt it. Why? Because you know too much about it. Come on, sing it. Everything. Everything to me. Everything. Together, if the Lord has been good to you from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, He's worthy of all of our praise. Good morning, church. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And this Sunday morning is even more special as we celebrate 134 years of being one body in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's celebrate God for what He has done. Over 134 years. What a blessing. 
On this Sunday, we come to this table and we celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us in salvation. It is our testimony that Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it whiter than snow. At this table, there are elements of bread and wine. The bread represents the broken body of Christ. The wine represents his shed blood. Taken together, they remind us that we have been forgiven from sin. We have been given the free gift of eternal life, but not only that, life abundantly right now. It gives me great joy, my friends, to invite you to our Lord's table. That Jesus shed for me.
never lose, never lose this song. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never lose this song. It'll keep my mind from day to day. Oh, yes, it will, yeah. So I'm gonna walk by his precious believing side. It'll never live, no, no. Never mm, yeah, yeah. Never gonna lose. The Apostle Paul admonished us never to come to this table without reflection. Reflection concerning our sinfulness before God. Reflection concerning his forgiveness that is full and free. So let us now pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it in front of those disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In like manner, he took the cup. He lifted it and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. So often as you drink it, drink this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We thank you for the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we ask that you would empower us to live in the full strength of the resurrection henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people said together, amen. amen. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time, would you please rest on your feet that we might acknowledge your presence today? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, church family. Let's make our first time friends feel real welcome. We're delighted to have you worshiping with us today. And we pray that something will be said or done that will encourage you along your way. If you have a pastor and a church family, please give them our regards. If not, we invite you to hang around Burnett Avenue uh, as we love to have new friends join us in this journey of faith. This morning, I'm curious about something. Who has been the member, a member of Burnett Avenue for the longest period of time? Uh, as we celebrate, I wanna know who has been a member for the longest period of time. Um, if you joined this church or were baptized uh, in 1930, would you stand on your feet? 1940, stand on your feet. 1950, stand on your feet. Oh, 1955. 1960, 60, 1960, who, 1960, 1967, who I got back here, when did you join, when were you back there, you don't remember, it's in the six. that, that don't count, it can't be no competition, <laughs> she said, I don't remember, it was sometime back then, yes ma'am, 66, Six, y'all gotta have precise dates, okay, what, when were you baptized? Well, when were you 12? <laughs> okay, when were you baptized? Ma'am? Hill Street. Okay, what year? Oh, so y'all gotta remember the years. All right, Who, how, when were you baptized? 65. Can anybody do better than 65? At Burnett Avenue. Okay, Brother Houston, you were 62? 
Who baptized you? <laughs> Reverend Crittenden baptized you? Okay, let me see. Anybody got six, better than 62? Do I hear 61? <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, this turned into a competition now. <laughs> they count real good, yes. That would have been 73, 63. Y'all the same? What year was that? 1960. Okay, y'all sure? Y'all? <laughs> okay, who baptized y'all? Reverend J. Baker. Y'all sure? It's, it's, it's going, 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 <laughs> final time. All right. Since y'all say y'all been here since 1960, uh, we're going to give that to you all, being a member of the church. We're going to have to go back and check the records, though, okay? So don't, don't open them yet until we can verify. We are so honored uh, this morning to have our senator, none other than Senator Gerald Neal, who is joining us to celebrate this day. Would you come forward, Senator Neal? He has something for us. First, give it down to God. Bernard Avenue Baptist Church. My, my, my. I was baptized in, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to stop by. Um, to acknowledge uh, this wonderful, wonderful occasion and to celebrate the, the work that the pastor, the church, congregation has done and continues to do and will do. And uh, so it gives me pleasure to do that. I won't take a bunch of time. I'll just get right to it. Uh, the Senate, Commonwealth of Kentucky, to all to whom these presents shall come greetings. Know ye that Bernard Avenue Baptist Church is recognized and honored upon the auspicious occasion of its 134th anniversary celebration. 134th anniversary celebration. This beloved institution is celebrated as its members come together to commemorate the many obstacles that have been overcome and triumphs that have been enjoyed over the course of this church, church's extraordinary history. Inasmuch as the dedicated congregation and pastorate of this cherished institution have faithfully provided spiritual guidance and support that have touched the lives of countless people for more than a century and have greatly contributed to the spiritual health and well-being of the Louisville community, Bernard Avenue Baptist Church is congratulated as its members rejoice in the abundant blessings of Christian fellowship, is extended best wishes for continued success and good fortune rendered in service of the Lord. And on the motion of Senator Gerald A. Neal is hereby deemed by this honorable body worthy of its recognition. We like to say that these words will be spread across the books of the Commonwealth forever and a day. Congratulations. Sir. <laughs> All right, let's get down to business. Now, Tuesday is a very, very important day. <laughs> now, tell them what is at stake in this gubernatorial election and why we cannot sit at home, why we must vote. Will you please help us? You, you know, I, I didn't want to mention that because of this 134th celebration, and I was struggling with it over there. And thank you, Pastor. Raising it up. <laughs> you already know. I don't really have to tell you. But I'll tell you what you can do. Because I know everybody in here is registered. And you're gonna, you probably already voted, most of you. The rest of you are going to vote, right? So that leaves only one thing for you to do. Grab your neighbor. Grab your family. Grab your community all across the Commonwealth, not just next door, and tell them this is your voice. This is our democracy. And this is the most powerful expression that you can undertake. I don't have to say any more. What happens if uh, 
Governor Bashir doesn't get a second term. What is at stake? Now, see, he wants to get down into the. <laughs> That's what I like about this guy. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens. There's no, let me put it this. There's very little leverage left that's going to step forward and advance those issues that are true and due to you, true and due to us. That's the nicest way I can say it, Pastor. Now, the worst way I can say it, the worst way I can say it is that it's going to be a setback like you haven't seen before. And it is that important that you come out. This crowd that I work with, and I hate to generalize because there's some good people out there, very good people. I mean, really serious. But either, some of them, I'm just going to say it, some of them are either ignorant or they don't care and they don't understand what a democracy is about and what it means to lift the least of these, you know? If you don't start there, where do you start? Isn't that not what this is about? All of them claim they're Christian, Reverend, I'm just telling you. They talk to me, look me in the eye, and I look them back in the eye and say, hey, you need to go to the church I go to because this is a little different from what I know. Don't, don't keep me going. Don't, don't, don't do it. You take this back. Take it back. Take it back. Will you all help me celebrate Senator Neal, who has served our community since 1989 in the Senate. Come on, let's celebrate him. We appreciate you, sir. We appreciate the work that you do and that you will continue to do. In the foyer, there is a sample ballot, and there is also a sheet that makes it real easy for you to know who it is that would be most responsible for you to vote for. Um, this is a, so let me say for all my young people who say my vote, uh, voting doesn't matter. It matters in this election. One vote, one person. No electoral college. It is critical that you make your voice heard in this election. We've had a, a wonderful week here at Burnett Avenue. On Tuesday, we had uh, our Harvest Festival and it was an absolute blast. I wanna thank everyone who was a part of that. Thank you for making it what it was. Every volunteer, every vendor, splendid events, everybody who uh, made that event fun for kids. And there were so many kids in here that it was, well, they kept coming. Uh, but we're thankful. I was worried a little bit, but y'all brought enough candy and we're thankful for each of you. Uh, Revival on Wednesday night was outstanding uh, with Dr. Parks and Dr. Matthew, they blessed us. If you miss this Wednesday, come this coming Wednesday with Reverend Eric Alexander. On Saturday, we did Homecoming Inside Out, and uh, we had members all over this city uh, being a blessing to homeless people, being a blessing uh, to some senior facilities, being a blessing in a variety of ways. And I want to thank each of you for participating in that. Sister Vicki Wilson, would you please stand, Sister Wilson? She led up that effort. Don't be shy now, Sister Wilson. She led up that effort. Thank you for that work. It was hard work, uh, but we want to make sure that we are felt loving on Louisville and uh, you made that happen. Thank you very much. And this morning, we have in our midst, um, as our guest clinician, uh, the uh, renowned Mr. Patrick Lundy, all the way from Washington, D.C., and he's blessing us in a tremendous way, working with our music ministry. Thank you for being with us all the way for D from D.C. and accepting our invitation today. It's time to give. Uh, but just, amen, as you prepare your gifts this morning, it gives me great joy to introduce, to, well, to introduce today uh, our speaker. I, I, I struggle to use the word introduce because that's probably not the best word to use when it comes to the Reverend A. Russell Ockert. 
He needs no introduction to Bernard Avenue. In fact, over the past probably 40 years, would you say, uh, Reverend, Ocker, Reverend Ockert has been uh, here repeatedly in times of crisis, in times of um, where we needed some extra guidance to ensure that our congregation stayed strong. In those periods, we could always count on the Reverend A. Russell Ockert to be here and to hold this church together with the help of the Lord until uh, that season had passed. He's done that several times. He's responsible for at least two, if not three or four pastors uh, serving in the pastorate of this church. Um, beyond that, let me speak to who he is to me. You know, when God knows what you need, uh, when you need it, right? And I met Reverend Ockert at 19 years old. He called my phone. And since that day, he has been a steady mentor, a steady guide. I don't generally make a decision without calling Reverend A. Russell Ockert and saying, what do you think and what would you do? And he answers my phone calls. If I were him, I would not answer my phone calls anymore. Uh, but he has been that type of mentor, that type of fatherly mentor. And I am tremendously indebted to uh, Dr. A for his kindness, his generosity, his wisdom, his mentorship. And this congregation is indebted to him. And those of you who have been here for quite some time know the times that he has shown up and has been a blessing in the life of Bernard Avenue. So we are blessed today to have Reverend A. Russell Ockard as our preacher for this morning. Would you help me welcome him to the Bernard Avenue Church? And um, I'm excited to hear what the Lord will say through him. Let's lift those gifts high. Lord, we thank you for gifts to give. Take now these gifts, maximize and multiply them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Pour blessings back into the lives of your people that there would be no lack. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Net family, I'm Lauren White, and it's time for this week's edition of the Net News. Thank you, Burnett Avenue, for the ways you contributed to the success of our annual Harvest Festival on October 31st and our Inside Outreach Day of Service on November 4th. Whether you donated candy or volunteered to serve at either of these events, we truly appreciate you, and our community appreciates you too. Being a blessing to others is what it's all about, and we praise God for his blessings to us and through us. The Net Silver and Gold Senior Community will be taking the Louisville Mega Caverns tram ride through Lights Under Louisville on Saturday, November 11th at 12 noon. The cost is $19.99 per person, and children under three are free. Dress warmly or bring a blanket as the underground temperatures run 58 to 60 degrees. Arrive 30 minutes prior to secure your parking and ticket purchases. The address is 1841 Taylor Avenue. Parking is free in the lower parking lot. The tram runs every 30 minutes. Sign up at the Welcome Center for a final count will be given to the Mega Cavern on November 1st. Mark your calendar for a November to remember. Burnett Avenue's annual Wednesday Night Revival Series features high-powered preaching and high-spirited worship every Wednesday in November at 7 p.m. Each Wednesday will feature a different guest preacher and guest music ministries. Our guest on November 8th is Rev. Eric L. Alexander, Senior Pastor of the St. Luke Baptist Church in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Join us November 15th as we welcome Rev. Dr. Danielle Brown, Senior Pastor of the Shiloh Baptist Church in Plainfield, New Jersey. Our pastor's pastor, Dr. F. Bruce Williams and the Bass Memorial family will be our guest for our pre-Thanksgiving service on November 22nd. Our final Wednesday night worship on November 29th will introduce Rev. Jeremiah Johns, the new pastor of Louisville's Mount Olive Baptist Church. Calling all minority entrepreneurs. 
We're gearing up for Back to Black Sunday at the net, and we don't want you to miss out. Entrepreneurs and vendors can sign up for a free table to promote their service-oriented businesses or sell their food and retail products by scanning the QR code now or emailing lauren.white at bernardavbap.com to receive the sign-up link. This event is all about supporting our Black-owned businesses and giving them that extra push into the holiday season. The big event is Sunday after Thanksgiving, November 26th, in our multi-purpose room following our 9 and 11 a.m. worship services. Again, there's no charge for the space, but all vendors must register no later than November 20th. Our monthly men's community Bible study will resume meeting the third Saturday in January 2024. Our monthly women's community Bible study will close out 2023 with special holiday studies on November 11th at 10 a.m. and December 9th at 10 a.m. Burnett Avenue's new website is now up and running. Visit BurnettAvBap.com to get connected to ministry and stay up to date on upcoming events. And please contact the church office if you need additional information. That's all for now. Be blessed, Net family, and have a great week. In the late 1800s, a group of African-American Christians began holding prayer meetings at a home in the Fort Hill neighborhood of Louisville, Kentucky. The prayer meetings grew until a mission was organized by the Lambton Baptist Church in 1889. A lot was purchased at 1425 Bland Street, and the Bland Street Baptist Church was born. The new edifice was built under the leadership of Reverend Wakefield Hart, a member of Lambton, who became the first pastor. The membership grew over the years with leadership from several pastors, but it was under the 17-year guidance of Pastor T.J. Talley that the church purchased a lot at 511 East Burnett Avenue and broke ground. Though Reverend Talley turned the first spade of earth in 1921, the Lord called him home before the building could be erected. God provided a new leader in the Reverend James A. Baker, who led the building construction and the congregation entered the new edifice on November 11, 1923, by marching from the old church on Bland Street to the new church on Burnett Avenue, and the church became the Burnett Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. The building suffered severe damage in the 1937 flood, but rebounded and continued to serve as a means of spiritual support for the surrounding Fort Hill community. Reverend Baker, shown here in the center of the congregation, served faithfully for 38 years from 1921 to 1959. Reverend William M. Coleman, a member of the congregation, served as interim pastor until July 1961. It was his leadership that rallied the congregation to restore the facility after most of the interior was damaged by fire on November 4, 1960. The congregation re-entered the refurbished facility in February 1961. The church extended a call to the Reverend John Oliver Crittenton Sr., who became pastor in August 1961. Under his leadership, the church membership continued to increase spiritually and numerically. On the afternoon of Saturday, January 29, 1966, the building suffered another fire, this time a three-alarm fire in near-zero degree weather. Two-thirds of the building was destroyed, but Pastor Crittenden, with the aid of the members and several dedicated trustees, led the congregation to build a new edifice on the same site, and the flock joyously entered the new building on November 6, 1966. Reverend Crittenden faithfully shepherded the congregation for 18 years until September 1979. The Lord led the church in calling Reverend Christopher Leon Hagen, who served several years as an associate minister at Burnett Avenue under Reverend Crittenden. He began on November 25, 1979. During his seven years of leadership, Pastor Hagen led the church to increase financially through tithes and offering. The first female trustees were appointed, a bus ministry and several sports ministries were initiated, which brought many youth to Sunday school and kept them active in the life of the church. 
educational scholarships were provided, and additional properties along Burnett Avenue were purchased, making way for future church expansion. Reverend Hagen served as pastor until 1986. On August 20th, 1988, the church called its first full-time pastor in the Reverend Gerald Lamont Thomas. He led the congregation in its centennial celebration in 1989 with rally days throughout the year culminating in a grand banquet at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Reverend Thomas's preaching won many converts to Christ and his teaching brought new life to Wednesday night Bible study. New programs and ministries were implemented and new member orientation classes were added to the Sunday school curriculum, which developed many church members into church leaders. And Burnett Avenue licensed her first female preacher. In 1993, after five years as pastor, Reverend Thomas was called to another church. On September 3, 1993, Reverend Johnny D. Clark was called to serve as interim pastor. But after several months of leadership, Reverend Clark accepted the call to become our next full-time pastor on June 1, 1994. Under his leadership, the membership grew through the teaching of God's Word, Christian leadership training, college-level Bible classes, organized evangelism, and increased ministry and mission. He led the church to purchase two portable classrooms for educational space, two additional properties to enlarge the church's campus, and two 15-passenger vans to extend our reach and carry out the Great Commission. Pastor Clark retired January 31, 2010. Through much prayer and guidance of the Holy Spirit, on May 24, 2010, the church called the 23-year-old Reverend Daniel Corey Schull. He preached his first sermon as pastor on June 27, and installation services were held on August 22, 2010. Under the leadership of this visionary, the church launched into 21st century technology, and through his innovative thinking, powerful preaching, and teaching, many souls have been added and reclaimed to the kingdom of God. Within two years of his pastorate, attendance grew to warrant three Sunday morning worship services. Therefore, new building plans were drawn up for the Burnett Avenue properties. Instead, God led Pastor Schull to a vacant church property located at 6800 South Hurstbourne Parkway. And in the spring of 2013, Pastor Schull led the congregation to purchase and renovate this new property. And the entire congregation moved to the new location and began its three worship services on Sunday, June 16th, 2013. In October 2014, we offered a fourth worship opportunity on Saturday evenings and an additional parking lot was added. During 2015, we renovated the multi-purpose room to add five additional classrooms and 11 deacons were ordained. The following year, the church purchased a portable church housed in a 45-foot trailer and became one church in two locations adding a 915 Sunday morning worship at the Tinseltown Movie Theater from January to May. We began live streaming our 10 a.m. worship service and launched a Back to Sunday School initiative in August. By the end of the year, the renovation of our full commercial kitchen was complete and state-of-the-art lighting was installed in the sanctuary. In 2019, another 7.7 .7 acres of land was purchased, giving us a total of 17 acres. We celebrated our 130th church anniversary at the downtown Marriott Hotel with all the grandeur it deserved. And in December, our church choir released its first album entitled Christmas Now with Minister V. Michael McKay. The years of the COVID-19 pandemic proved Pastor Schull's forethought and innovation as Burnett Avenue was already streaming worship services and was able to provide online worship experiences for our congregation and many others as well. During this period of light attendance, we totally renovated and upgraded our sanctuary and foyer. Burnett hosted Christian education classes, Wednesday Bible study, and Vacation Bible School virtually, and held drive through communion, Ash Wednesday services, Easter, and harvest celebrations. By the summer of 2021, most in-person services and activities resumed. In 2022, we launched new ministries, ordained three associate ministers, and 11 new deacons from our congregation, four of whom were female, making yet another stride in history. 
Plans for the coming years include expanding toward 100% hybrid ministry, maintaining connection through year-long small groups, a community development corporation called the Fort Hill Foundation, and developing dedicated worship and education spaces for our children and youth. As we pause to thank God for the past 134 years of guidance, we look forward to taking the next step through stewardship, tools, empowerment, and proclamation to be the church that provides relevant ministry to serve the present age and beyond. To God be the glory for the things he has done.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Pastor Show, Senator Neal, members and friends who share us with us today in the 134th anniversary of Bernard Avenue Baptist Church. I greet you in the name of our Lord. And I bring you greetings from my family and also from the members of New Zion Baptist Church. I want to thank the pastor for this time of sharing. Thank God for his leadership as pastor and preacher and also in our community. I want him to know that we pray for him at the school board. And we thank the Lord for this hour of celebration. Are you waiting to back me up or something? <laughs> Are you planning to stand for the entire message? The scripture, all right, thank you so much. It wouldn't be very stressful if you stood for the message because we don't want to hold you too long. The scripture that was quoted in the beginning of my presentation is from Psalm 107. And I'm reading on the screen a subject and text that I do not recognize. <laughs> so we're going to be challenged today. But I have one to share with you from Psalm 107, verses 2 and 3. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, according to the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. These words are recorded in Psalm 107, verses 2 and 3. You may be seated. <laughs> the language and the declaration of Psalm 107, verse 2 is so familiar that it is often used universally. It is a favorite slogan for the church gathered in worship. And that phrase that says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, has always been a challenging concept to me because I've always wondered say what? What is say so? I heard a story once of a pastor and deacons. Several of them were getting ready to go out on a fishing trip. And they invited a member who had just joined the church, a young man who had come off of a very hard life. When they invited him, he said, no, I don't think you want me to go with you. He said, yes, we would like for you to go. He said, but you see, I don't think I'm prepared to go. One of the deacons said, well, if you don't know how to fish, we'll help you. We'll show you how to fish. 
and hope that you are successful in catching a fish. The new member said, but no, that's not my problem. It's not that I don't know how to fish. He said, but I'm new to the church, and I haven't been able to overcome all of my issues. And I'm afraid if I go out there with you, I'll upset you. They said, oh, no, no, come on. He said, well, how could you, ex how could you ex upset us? He said, well, the language and words that I use, that I'm still using, might upset the fishing trip. And they said, oh, no, come on and join us. And so they went out on the water, and they were fishing. And after about an hour, the pastor got a bite on his line. And he began to reel it in. And it took him a while to reel it in. Uh, the fish on the other side was resistant, rebellious, and strong enough to be both. And he kept on reeling, and finally he got the fish close to the boat, and the fish jumped up out of the water. And he saw how long the fish was. And he kept on reeling, and finally, when he was almost there, the line broke. And the preacher paused, and then he turned around to the new member and said, somebody ought to say something. <laughs> so what do we mean when we say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? I believe it is a time for a testimony. I believe it is an occasion for witnessing. I believe that we can praise the Lord on a day like this. And not just universally, but with particularity. Every one of us that has been redeemed or regenerated ought to be thankful. It is a sign of the unregenerate. They are not thankful. They don't really appreciate and understand the source of their supply. Redeemed. The, the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What does that mean? That means we need a testimony that can be universally applied. A, a, a testimony that every redeemed person can share. Which, of course, eliminates the testimony about your new car. And it eliminates uh, the testimony of your promotion on your job. It also eliminates the testimony about how you are a cancer survivor. Why is that? Because everybody can't identify with either of those three testimonies or another thousand that are particular and partic personal in your life. What we need to start with is a universal testimony. One that will work anytime, anywhere with anybody. 
Oh, you can add all that other stuff on to it as, as, as a testimony of what God has done for you since then. But the one we are talking about today is the testimony about the one that we all ought to be able to agree with. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do we have anybody in here? Who's been redeemed? Oh, no, no. I didn't say anybody in here that was baptized in Burnett Avenue. I didn't say anyone that came down and gave their hand to the preacher. I said, do we have any that are redeemed? Ransomed. Paid for. Bought and paid for anybody in here that has that testimony. Let's get to the basics and start there. I have to admit to you that the premise and concept of redemption is not one that was easy for me to understand. I think I was preaching before I had a real good, solid concept of what it meant to be redeemed. We tell part of the story about Jesus. We tell about him coming into this world and going about doing good. We talk about his sacrificial Life and death. Oh, we, we know the story by heart of what happened to him on the Via Dolorosa from Pilate's Judgment Hall to the, to the hill called Golgotha. We know that Friday was not the end of the story. Ah, the preacher said early Sunday morning. But that does not tell the story of redemption. For to be redeemed, something has to be paid. I had a problem with that. And then I thought about my childhood. I was a childhood entrepreneur. I stumbled into it. I didn't set out to go in business. But um, I was always looking for a better way so I could work smart rather than working hard. And so my grandfather gave me a calf. That was a gift. I wanted a calf. And uh, in the course of time, that calf grew up to be a cow. And then I, with my inquisitiveness, I wanted that cow to be bred so that I could have another calf. So they put it together and they got the cow bred. And the cow gave birth to a little calf. The calf grew and was weaned off of the cow to eat grass. There's something I hadn't figured on. Nobody told me. That after the cow had its first calf, it would produce milk every day. And the calf didn't want to drink the milk because it was eating grass. So somebody had to milk the cow. And cows are not just waiting around for you to get ready to milk them. They have to be milked on time, early in the morning, before the school bus comes, in the fall, in the winter, uh, yeah, and, and it's cold at five o'clock in the morning. I said, this job is a good job, but I've got to find a way out of this. 
And so I, I had heard about a neighbor who had cows. And I went and talked to him, and he said, well, I know what you can do with your cow. I'll help you get your cow milked. What I'll do is when I go to the stockyard, they have calves born a day or two ago. You can buy one of those calves. I'll bring it home to you. You can put your calf to this cow, and this cow will nurse the calf. The calf will drink the milk, and you won't have to get up so early in the morning. But there's one catch. You have to buy the calf. You bring the calf home because if you don't buy the calf and someone doesn't buy the calf, they're going to slaughter the calf. And that's going to produce veal at some fine dining restaurant. So when you buy the calf, you save the calf's life. You redeem the calf. Because you paid the price so the calf wouldn't die at three days of age, but rather would have a new lease on life and could live on in a natural way. And now, brothers and sisters, I have a clearer understanding about what Jesus did for me and for you and for the whole world. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Paul says we are bought with a price. And the psalmist says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's what we ought to be saying. That we have been redeemed. The psalmist says, let the redeemed say so. Who's holding you back? Nobody's holding you back. You hold yourself back. You hold yourself back because you want to, before you say anything, you want to check out what someone else is saying or how they are reacting. You want to get your clue from them. But I come to tell you, this business of letting the redeemed say so is an act of freedom. I said it's an act of freedom. We are free if we've been redeemed. To tell somebody, I've been redeemed, and just as I've been redeemed, you can be redeemed. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. What is the testimony? of Burning Avenue on this 134th anniversary Sunday. What is the testimony? Is the testimony a new building? Is the testimony we survived the flood? Is the testimony that we have a distinguished leader as a pastor? Or is the testimony we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb? And we have been redeemed. And we have a song. I said we have a song that the angels cannot sing. I haven't found one yet that can say I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I know how you feel today. You feel like one of my members in prayer meeting would get up. And before she would say anything, she'd start singing. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't keep it to myself. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody. 
but how he saved my soul, how he put my name on the roll. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. I don't know what your testimony is, but the least of your testimony, you can start with saying, I've been redeemed. And if I was redeemed, if the Lord saved me, he will save you and you and you and you and you. He'll save you from the gutter to the utter. He'll save you to the day of redemption. He'll save you. Just let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Would you help me again thank God for the Reverend Dr. A. Russell Locker. Come on, we can do better than that. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's what you call wisdom and sageliness there. We're standing all over the sanctuary. Maybe you're here this morning and you can't say that you've been redeemed. If that's you, we offer Christ to you. While the blood runs warm in your veins, the doors of the church, they're open. Oh, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. redeemed. with a bride. Jesus, Jesus has changed. anniversary church family there are cupcakes out in the foyer and we invite you uh, to celebrate this birthday of Vernon Avenue uh, with cupcakes the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord let the light of his countenance upon you the Lord make his face to shine upon you the blessings of God the Father God the Son God the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you in your labor and in your leisure, in your meditation and your celebration, in your joy even in sorrow, until that day when we shall all stand at the feet of the living Lord Jesus Christ. May you be blessed. May you be empowered. May you have peace. And all the ransomed of Christ said together triumphantly, amen. Have a strong week. <laughs>